I bring you greetings from a First Nation in British Columbia. We are located in the northwestern part of British Columbia, home of the Niska people. I am happy to report that these people are alive and well today. Imagine, if you will, a place of mighty rivers, teeming tidal estuaries, dense temperate rainforest, and towering mountains, a place of abundance and opportunity. Imagine a people living a traditional life, speaking their own language and living their lives according to their own ancient laws. Now imagine agents of a foreign government arriving on our territory and proclaiming it the property of a foreign king, asserting control over people's lives and embarking on an ambitious and systematic program of social engineering. These events that I describe are not ancient history. This was the world in which my grandfather was raised. The Aboriginal people did not disappear. They reclaimed their identity, culture, lands, and liberty through patience, determination, and principled negotiations. In the 1880s, much of our traditional territory was unilaterally declared crown land, but no treaty was ever signed between our leaders and any government. In 1887, the Niska sent a delegation to meet with the Premier of British Columbia in Victoria to discuss land and treaty issues. We were denied. In 1913, the Niska sent a formal petition to the Privy Council in London to secure recognition of our right to our territory. The issue was referred back to Canada. In 1973, 86 years after our first delegation, the Supreme Court of Canada delivered its landmark decision in the Calder case, which was brought to trial by Niska Chief Frank Calder. In its decision, the court ruled that the Niska had held Aboriginal title before the arrival of Europeans. I believe that British justice will prevail. And if it doesn't, if it does not prevail, the Indians in British Columbia will be prepared to go to the Hague, the court of law world over, if not even to the United Nations. We're not going to stop. Formal negotiations between the Niska Tribal Council and Canada finally began in 1976. Then, after a generation of Niska leaders had grown old at the negotiation table, Canada's Senate finally approved the Niska Treaty on April 13, 2000. After ratification of the Niska Final Agreement, the Federal Indian Act, which governs the lives of Canada's Aboriginal people, ceased to apply to the Niska Nation. The effective date of the treaty was a historic and triumphant one for our people. It marked the end of, one, of a 113-year journey and the first steps in a new direction. No longer beggars in our own lands, we now go forward with dignity 
equipped with the confidence that we can make important contributions, social, political, and economic, to Canadian society. Today, the population of the Niskanesin is approximately 6,500 people, with the majority residing in four communities in the Nas River Valley. As well, many live in British Columbia's urban centers. The Nisqa Nation owns 2,000 square kilometers of land in fee simple. The fee simple ownership of Nisqa lands is now the most comprehensive in Canada and includes all surface and subsurface resources. Prior to the treaty, we did not control the resources of our traditional territory. Title to the land upon which we live was held by the federal government. For generations, Nisqa could not acquire or sell property without the approval of the federal minister, nor could we enjoy the advantages of equity. The Land Holding Transition Act represents for the Nisqa Nation uh, uh, a big step forward, uh, primarily in the area of economic prosperity. Uh, it was identified that the major barriers to the creation of wealth opportunities for Niska citizens was the land tenure holding system we had at the time, which in, in many ways reflected, and this was done deliberately at the time of the effective date, reflected the restrictions uh, of the certificate of possession uh, under the former Indian Act uh, uh, regime that we, we lived under. Individual homeowners will get to decide for themselves under the legislation uh, whether they want to avail themselves of this opportunity. They will get to um, transform their current uh, village entitlement or nation entitlement, uh, whichever their uh, residential property is, is currently under, uh, into a full, uh, fully transferable fee simple title. The way that it'll help uh, my family, uh, especially with my children being uh, adult age, it will help us to help them to obtain homes of their own. Our government is built on both democratic and traditional Nisqa values. A government of our design and choosing. Nisqa government is composed of Nisqa Lissom's government and four village governments. The Nisqa nation acts through Nisqa Lissom's government which consists of executive and legislative branches, as well as a council of elders. This government is representative and responsible to its citizens. Ayok. For Ayok has been around from time immemorial, and I don't think it would ever go away. It's always there. It's been passed on by our elders to the young people about their own laws and the way we look after each others and the way we deal with each others, the way we deal with general public. And uh, that is part of what the elders, Council of Elders uh, role is in regards to the modern treaty. So the Council of Elders was formed, and it's right in the constitution of the Niskan Nation, as part of a group that would work along with Lissom's government to nurture what the activities are to assure that the Niska nation are uh, not forgotten in regards to our own Ayok, our culture and our language. <laughs> We have always organized our lives and our society 
around the concept called Sight Was Mistah, which interprets to our common bowl. Under this principle, it is understood that since everyone relies on the same resources and community, all must contribute to its sustainability. It's about sharing energy, wisdom, spirit, joy, and sadness, and it touches all aspects of life. It is all inclusive, and no one is left out. To us, self-government means having the freedom to live by our traditions, and to live with the consequences of the decisions we make. It means we are free to prosper by our own hand and ingenuity. It means we are no longer tenants on our land. We are masters in our own house once again. We recognize the importance of education in fostering and protecting our language and culture. We have always learned with and from each other. It was not always so. Others sought to tell us what and how we should learn. It didn't work. We were able to phase out the federal school system and brought about other institutions into our communities. We now operate a provincial Niska school district. Our people are involved in making decisions about what and how our children learn. In our elementary and secondary schools, approximately 560 young people are enrolled in bicultural and bilingual courses. Very important. It's very important that we preserve all of this because without it, we. Uh, the, the younger people of the future will lose who they are. They will, they will lose that, that gap. And they call it, I guess, a generation gap. So uh, with, without the knowledge of the past, their past, they will not understand their future. Today I'll be presenting my project for 239. First Nation Studies language, uh, and I'll be doing it at Ngigat, my, my family tree. Wilp Wilhask Niska, which translates as Niska House of Wisdom, and offers Niska based post secondary programs in our communities. I work here at Wilp Wilhask, and I teach um, First Nation Studies language. 139 to uh, 322. It offers vocational and technical training, grade 12 achievement, university and college preparation, and a Bachelor of Arts degree in First Nations Studies. Wilpulhaaskmuska has enjoyed tremendous success with over 2,500 course completions to date. One of the highlights just over the recent years is we're sponsoring a, a student who's now principal for Nathan Bard Elementary School. He's now going in for his master's and that's one of the key successes where we're sending our students to school and they're eventually taking over key jobs in the community to help us move forward. We are relearning and reviving our language and our culture in ways appropriate for present generations and for future generations of Niska. Our nation is gathered in this community to celebrate a cultural day. We call it Obie. Obie. This is the beginning of the harvest season, many harvest seasons of the Niska people. We have 13 moons that indicate the harvest seasons of our nation. The moon will rise if it was clear tonight. You would see a sliver of a little moon, the first sliver of the new moon called 
Obeye. And the Obeye comes from the Nisqat word Obi. Obi is the wooden spoon that traditionally was used in the meals with, uh, in all of the households of our nation. Obi, the wooden spoon. And that's where uh, this celebration drew its roots. Obi Hay, Obi Yay, the Psawarato. The Nisqua Nation are known as the people of the Nas River. The Nas River is the lifeblood of an uncommonly rich water set. It ties Nisqua villages to each other and our land to the sea. It also connects the past to the future. The Nisqua Nation supports traditional culture and is working to cultivate new ways of economic and entrepreneurial thinking and to establish the basis for a diversified and sustainable economy. For thousands of years, the abundant salmon runs of the Nass River were harvested in a manner that allowed us to build and sustain our villages and to develop trading relationships that extended into the interior and ranged up and down the Pacific coast. Under our treaty, we now have the right to fish throughout nearly 27,000 square kilometers of our traditional territory. For the Nuska people, participation in the management of the fishery is vital for both cultural and economic reasons. Recognizing this, Canada and the Nisqua Nation cooperatively manage the resource for the benefit of present and future generations of all peoples. And that's what we're known for now, our fish management is, is our fish wheel program. And it's, it's uh, um, second to none with respect to the assessment that, uh, the, uh, that we do. I have uh, a fish wheel uh, crew who uh, divides their responsibilities of taking scale samples and these are live fish, and they're released live. So this is a uh, 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 progress uh, of that has been very successful. In addition to our domestic harvest under the treaty, Nisqa fishermen are now able to sell salmon on the open market. Prior to the treaty, this was prohibited. This new industry has enabled our communities to benefit significantly in jobs, income, and self-esteem. We are learning through our business partners the value of our salmon because when we started it was just purchased as an ocean run product with the major industry on the BC coast and slowly over the years we are learning more and more about how to create value to it. The director of Fish and Wildlife um, canned salmon and made a logo, Nishka Wild Salmon, with our partner, uh, the Can Canfisco. And we use that as gift giving and sharing to, to share with the world uh, that we do have good quality salmon. So we use canned salmon to make that uh, market penetration. We are also investing in tourism. As an economic engine, British Columbia's tourism industry is very significant. Much of this success is tied to the province's renowned natural beauty and wildlife. We are taking part in British Columbia's tourism sector by showcasing our unique environment, our traditional knowledge of the land and water, and our rich cultural heritage. I own the business of Nass Valley Gifts and Lorraine's Lava Lodge and Lorene's Catering. In 1992, I opened up the uh, bed and breakfast Lorene's Lava Lodge. Because I only had two rooms to begin with, I now have five rooms that I rent out. We put a lot in it and uh, I enjoy doing it because I love meeting different people. And I 
like working by myself because nobody tells me what to do. I'm my own boss. Right now, these past four years, I've been teaching design in this village, teaching uh, the art of making tools and um, carving totem poles, masks, bowls, spoons, talking sticks. Later on, these, um, we will be undertaking the, the task of um, carving more of these uh, house posts. And they, were, they will be um, building uh, longhouses to complement the uh, new museum. The way I've described the Nishka Museum, uh, it will symbolize uh, an emotional uh, repatriation of artifacts that have been out of our valley since the time of contact. And this is most important to the Nishka Nation uh, in terms of re-empowerment uh, of the Nishka Nation, the opportunities that are provided in the Nishka Final Agreement. This is one of the tangible ways in which we can demonstrate first and foremost to the citizens of the Nishka Nation uh, that we are uh, are truly bringing our ancestors home uh, with the repatriation of our artifacts, uh, but more to the point to the outside world uh, that we are still proud of our culture, we draw strength from it, and that is what helps us move forward with a clear vision. And one of the best things that ever happened was to have a road open into our community. New road construction has taken place in the Nass Valley. We have upgraded the highways throughout territory and have built an extension to connect to our southernmost community. If there's emergency, when the weather is uh, so cold or bad, the emergency plane couldn't make it in. But now we have uh, emergency vehicles that can transport anybody from King Holik to Terrace. This road was constructed through some of the most geotechnically challenging terrain in North America. These projects provided employment for Niska people. While road crews have successfully linked Niska villages to each other, our government is also laying the groundwork for opening modern communication links to the world. We provide broadband internet access for Nisqat people, business, and government through our own Intel Communications Incorporated. How do we keep our citizens, citizenry informed? Essentially, we have three major areas of responsibility. That's public relations and media relations as one area. The other is event planning. The third component is emergency response planning. The, the, the areas that we use is through NNKN, uh, which is the um, turned our community website. The NNKN does a lot of things for us. It's an area there we provide pictures in that area. So uh, some events as we cover, you'll see a pictorial review. For example, the museum that you, you've been hearing of. Uh, the other is there's a fairly good canoe project that's happening. Some of those areas are also areas of public education. So an informed and involved citizenry is essential to a strong Nishka government. That is one of the things that their elders wanted to do, and is to make their own decisions how to live, how to live a better life. Um, we set up meetings. We we brought the youth together and um, asked them what their issues were, what they'd like to see more of, what would help them. And we, we had a lot of stuff brought in, like a lot of issues and, and whatnot. And it was great to, to bring them together and to, to actually have our youth together in the village, in the community, rather than just coming together in like whatever it's programs were going on. I'm a economic slow. And it takes certain people who, who 
find something passionate about that they're passionate about to do something. For me, it took me here. I'm now a teacher at the Sigmund Sef Elementary School, and my experiences in government, my experiences in different places, the, the the different programs they brought me to, the different places I traveled to, realizing that something big can happen from something so small. <laughs> Niska government uses the common bowl principle to guide the delivery of health care, education, and social services. We believe community involvement in health care is critical to the health and well-being of our citizens. We now manage health care services through the Niska Valley Health Authority. The board is responsible for creating and maintaining health care facilities and promoting public health. Some of the innovations that we've been able to accomplish in the health care field are the introduction of a kickboxing program for our most at-risk youth. The goals of the program were to increase self-esteem and self-awareness and the value of teamwork through sport. Other programs that we've been fortunate to introduce have also related to gathering strength, which is a canoe journey. In the winter months, we have a, a really special program, which is called the Yachts Club. And it's youth off the street. And it's held on Friday and Saturday nights. The doors open at 9, and they're open until 2 a.m. And any of the youth in the community are welcome to go to the rec center, and they have all kinds of activities going on for the youth. And we set it out to the whole assembly. And lo and behold, the comeback was by taxes. And uh, there's tax coming handy when um, they fix up the roads and our kids go to school. It's a really big benefit. And some of our people don't uh, realize that when you pay into any kind of tax, you get the benefit of it. When uh, to have a better life in your community or in your home. We are working in partnership with the federal government to ensure the justice system reflects our values. The federal Aboriginal justice system provides funding to our government for access to justice programs. These programs encourage the revival of traditional Nisqa justice practices. We utilize a holistic process. We focus on the well-being of each individual that comes to the department uh, because we have a vested interest in the well-being of our people. Now more than ever, the Nisqa final agreement offers a beacon of hope for Aboriginal people. Treaty making and self-government offer us a way out of uncertainty. It gives us a solid foundation upon which we can build new positive relationships between government and Aboriginal peoples. Now that our treaty is in place, now that we control our own destiny, building these relationships is a top priority. And we do that in many ways. One of the things that we're quite used to is partnering with people. In business development, we find partners that are willing to, to undertake transfer of knowledge and to even invest in our community so that we can move ahead in economic development. We are one of the first uh, First Nations communities signed up to UBCM, the um, Union of BC Municipalities. Uh, we, we just joined up within the past year and we're one of the first uh, First Nations communities that have our OCP, Official Community Plan. Um, the community became more aware of what, what's entailed in an OCP and where we're going with our, our recreation lands to our industrial lands to um, residential and 
So it's been positive and a real learning curve for all. Since 2000, our community has focused on capacity building as we work towards the implementation of the first modern day treaty. We recognize that although we signed the treaty, that we needed to concentrate on training so that our own people um, can become the real government in our own land. We've managed to provide training and sponsor student able to take over the media center. And the project includes revitalizing our culture through uh, ancient villages and also totem poles of the Nass Valley. And that project was able to employ up to 15 to 30 over the past two projects we took on. And so our focus will continue to be um, capacity building. Our real work has only just begun. In the spirit of Saik Itlam Qawat, one heart, one path, one nation. The Nisqa Nation is a place where our ayuk, language and culture, are the foundation of our identity. Learning is a way of life. We strive for sustainable prosperity and self-reliance. We inspire trust and understanding through effective communication and our governance and services evolve to meet our people's needs.